This week's video is sponsored by Suda. Welcome back to this week's episode where my cat and dad pants are on, so you know it's time to do some woodwork. I'm in business. We are in the living room. It's still upside down, as you can see. I'm gonna start doing wall paneling on these two walls. So I've got this wall here, the wall behind you, and then if I have wood left over, I'm gonna do some detail around the window. And Magnolia wall is still there, if you saw the last video. I bought paneling kits online, but I think, I don't think the wood is pre-cut. I still think I have to do the measurements. It looks like there's an instruction sheet in it. Let's have a little look. So this is how my wood came. Haven't opened it. This says checklist. It looks like it's handwritten actually. Oh. This is handwritten. Ah uh, yes, because this helps me greatly. <laughs> okay, I have like a handwritten checklist and it says two 2.4 meter dado and this instruction picture 95 millimeters between 80 millimeters and 95 okay I can kind of understand that 95 between each square 95 from the bottom and 450 millimeters can I tell you something I actually learned about millimeters so I I'm used to using centimeters and inches because of sewing and my woodwork teacher told me to cut something and he says 35 and I said no he said 350 that's what he said I said 350 I says centimeters <laughs> he's like no millimeters he says only what's it he said he says only oh I can't remember what he said he said it quite funny though he was like only tailors use uh no, dressmakers, that's what he said. He says only dressmakers use centimeters and inches. So something I've learned from woodworking, maybe because it's a bit more precision, is woodworkers seem to work in millimeters. It's something I have learned and picked up along the way and copped and noticed. I think if I follow the instructions for the bottom, so 95 millimeters between the uh, squares, 95 millimeters for the first one here, like the depth between that and the baseboard, same with this 80 and thing. If I do the bottom, then I can decide what I want to do with the top pieces. I have to say, for my brain, this is one of the harder wall panelings. I know I did beadboard in Lily's room and I did uh, square ones and jacks, but this one I find harder because we've got mitres and we've got fine precision measurements. And I'm not good with math. The first thing I did with this wall was I had to do a little bit of prep work. So if you remember, I had a shelf on this wall with some like china and a few little knickknacks that I put into the kitchen. So I had a little bit of damage on the wall from when I removed it. And I also have a crack in the plaster work on the left hand side as well. I am using some of the Sudal Repair Express to fill in the long crack that I have on the left hand side. And I'm also going to be using it to fill in some of the chipped paint and the drill holes from the previous shelf as well. I just used the gun to put some of the products onto the wall and then I just smooth it out with this little handy smoothing tool that I have. You can use like an old plastic library card or credit card or whatever you have to smooth it down. Once it's dry, you can just use some sandpaper to sand it smooth and it's repaintable in 30 minutes.
gonna start by putting these two pieces up just so it feels like I have started something <laughs> before doing the squares on the bottom. So I have worked out that I need to go up 640 millimeters from my baseboard to the first small strip going across. Then I'm gonna measure up 80 millimeters and then I'm gonna put this second one across. So I'll have these bits, have my spirit level beside me. <laughs> to hopefully you stick them on right and I have roughly worked out um because of my wall width is 3310 millimeters um I think I can get five squares going across but I'm going to mark it out in pencil first so I don't make a mistake I highly recommend marking your wall in pencil because it's gonna need to be painted anyway but if you're like me I made mistakes you'll see later I'm actually making a mistake right now on screen the act of measuring from the baseboard up if your floor is level on the bottom mine is thank god if it's an older cottage house the floor might be uneven so some people will measure from the top down so yeah I am marking all the way across and I'm doing a straight line then with my spirit level but I still managed to make a mistake but definitely marking it in pencil is a great way to begin and to try and avoid making mistakes. I had some scrap MDF wood and I decided to make myself a tool. I had seen people doing this online but it made sense when I was trying to mark out the spaces between each of the frames. So I cut out a square block of wood that was 95 millimeters by 95 millimeters and I'm using this to get the right spaces in between. I hope it makes sense why I'm using this as the video goes on but I'm just using this um, as my guide for the spaces in between each of the squares and also the, to mark the distance from the bottom as well of, to the baseboard. I hope that makes sense what I'm saying. I've made two mistakes. First of all, they're not stuck to the wall, so it can be fixed. A mistake is a lesson. It's two o'clock in the day, I'm here since 11 and all I've done is make mistakes. So the first mistake is I made myself a block, which is handy. So this is 9.5 by 9.5 so that I can kind of measure the distance from this line. These two lines are too low and I kind of felt like they were. So where did I go wrong? Did I not measure? I went wrong somewhere. Like that's 640 millimeters. So maybe I didn't take into account the width of the wood. Basically, when I stick this on and do the square framing, there is not, there is only like an inch and a half where there should be 9.5 centimeters, 9.95 millimeters. It did seem quite low. But I don't know how I went wrong. Then I went wrong with cutting. Oh my god, I want to give up. Also, I did check the calendar. Mercury is in retrograde. So let's just blame it on that. First of all, I cut the corners correctly. They all measure to 45. But I somehow, I must have flipped the wood when it was on my miter. Um, they slim bit. So like they do all match up. And I was like, why does this not look right? And to the untrained eye, you would probably be like, that's okay. But this piece should be in here. So you can see I have a thicker piece here. It's because it should be this way. And again, I don't know how I made that mistake. I must have flipped the wood, so I must. I need to make sure that this ledge is facing my saw so that I can cut and cut. Obviously, I flipped the wood, and when I was cutting, I didn't check to make sure. Hang on. Yeah, I should have checked and had, it should have been this way on the saw and then it would have not made a boo-boo. 
I don't even know if I have enough wood to make these mistakes, but at least I've made it now before anything else. These are my new lights. Here's my 9.5 square. This is 45. So that is that. And then if this block sticks, oh, it fits perfect. <laughs> so now, I have 95, no, yeah, 95. So I am sucking diesel. So I hope you can see, but I have five squares on the wall. I'm a bit over it as well. Five squares on the wall. Hopefully all measured up okay. I use my little block as a guide and I have the two bits on top. Sorry, my camera, when something is like too bright, it kind of tends to lose focus. So now I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna cut five squares <laughs> and the pieces here. So this is 2.4. My wall is 3.31, so I, I have two pieces in a pack, so I will have enough in one pack for this wall. I may have some trim left over, and then the other pack, I hope I have enough to do this wall. This wall is a bit longer, so I'm going to have to hang on to any wood that I have left over. I highly recommend the electric saw for this one because if you're gonna use a miter box and your muscles, it's, it's gonna lengthen the time of the job. If you can borrow a miter saw, that is perfect. Or you could rent one for the weekend and see how you get on, but definitely a saw, I highly recommend one. I'm just cutting the square frames that are going on the bottom. Each side is 45 centimeters 450 millimeters see nearly went with the centimeters there so i'm just cutting them to size and making sure i'm not making a mistake and that all of the angles line up to adhere the pieces of wood to the wall i'm going to be using this pseudal fix all Turbo, which if you do a thin layer on the back, it will set in 20 minutes and then it cures in about three hours. This is the same product that I used on my nephew's bedroom makeover when I did the other style of paneling. And I can happily report that all of the pieces are still on the wall, nice and strong. And I only had to use my nail gun in a couple of areas of the wall, just where it was a bit uneven and I used a nail gun just to tack in the piece of wood in place while the adhesive set. Okay, 
carnage. <laughs> I feel like I'm at this all day. I am. Now, just an observation. Okay, so I've put two squares up. I've cocked as I've gone because when I when I just put them up, it looks like I it just looks like bad workmanship. And then when I cock it, oh, the magic, it just looks seamless. So yeah, I had to join an extra bit on the end down there. So I have three <laughs> squares left to do. And let me stand back. So that will be the panelled bottom. I had to get help getting this out. So I in the I thought I was gonna get a whole wall panel today. I have two strips left from this pack, and these are to do something up here, but I don't think I'm gonna have like because I made a mistake, I don't think I'm going to have enough, so I may have to take one from this pack. Well, because this is a bigger wall, although I do have a radiator here, so I will save some wood, I think. Okay, day one, here is how we are looking. Five squares, two bits of trim, looks even to the eye. <laughs> I think it is, maybe slightly off. Everything's cocked. I now need to decide what to do with the space on top. But the diagram that I have doesn't give any instructions for the top so i'm gonna have to figure this one out myself and i was thinking maybe i like the idea of a small medium and a small in the wall maybe maybe okay day two straight in no messing i decided to copy the bottom width wise if this makes sense so the squares on the bottom are 45 wide and I am doing the top pieces and I'm doing two large and a small. So I did two large squares and the width is 90, 45 times two. And then I have the square in the middle that is gonna be 45 wide. And then I measured the length of the wall and I used my square block from yesterday to make sure that I had a 95 millimeter gap on the top and at the bottom to the rail, which you're gonna see. Okay, I was much quicker this morning. It's lunchtime now and I have the last three squares of this wall up. Because I have five squares at the bottom, I, there's the fifth one there. I wanted to do a larger, a small and a larger and I centered the smaller one. Ideally, I wanted to have large in the middle, but I was thinking symmetrical. I went with a 45 here. This is 90 but it's coming up slightly short, so I just centered it. I don't think you can notice, and it's the same on both sides. So this is how it is looking. I'm just waiting on the cock to dry. Oh, 
And I'm also gonna have my lunch. So the last one is in here. It's all cocked and the crack as well. I think I realize why I have a crack. There's a really slight curve in the plaster in the wall, like really slightly. I only noticed it when I was putting this one in. Of all the pieces on top, this one, I just used my nail gun to tack in the ends because it kept flipping up. So I was like, I wonder is that why the plaster is cracking a little bit. So here we are, day two. What I am going to do is, I'm going to paint this section of the wall so that I can move the cabinet back in and then I'll finish painting the rest of the wall. So yeah, the cabinet will be in the nook so I'll still see a good chunk of the paneling. The only thing I was thinking, obviously the little smaller couch goes here. So it's gonna block probably like this section, but you'll still probably see the dado rails and you'll see all of this paneling up here. But can I just say, cock is the king <laughs> because, you know what, I was a bit better cutting these top bits, but it just makes everything look professional. Yeah, any of the little bits, I'll just sand them before painting. So last night when I came home, I did a coat of paint. I'm after doing a coat of paint this morning, about half eight, but I think it's mostly dry. The color, <laughs> I've made so many mistakes, but this one's a happy one. The color is the same as the color that was on the wall, but did now buy matte finish. And obviously there was a satin sheen in the original, but it's actually the matte finish is giving me kind of like vintagey vibes or something and I like it. It's not like a chalky finish but it's, it's it matte. Now if it was in the kitchen I'd be sweating because it's not, matte isn't ideal. It, you can wipe it but it would mark easier. Because it's the living room I'm okay with that. Let me show you my wall. So I am <laughs> delighted with myself. Looks straight enough. I love the colour. This room doesn't get an awful lot of sunlight. It gets sunlight first thing in the morning and then like it's bright but it doesn't get kind of direct sunlight all throughout the day. So this is kind of the colour that it stays most of the day. It's not like the kitchen that gets a lot of sunshine. And I love the two bits of beading, the smaller and the bigger. Probably wouldn't have thought of doing that um, it came with the pack that I got. So that is a happy accident. So I love, I think it makes it look more expensive. Like I've seen people putting wood trim on the wall, but I like how the two of them kind of elevates it. You can see on the right hand side where I stopped. So this is the old paint in a satin finish. And this is the new paint in the matte finish. It looks slightly brighter as well, but I absolutely love this. I am obsessed. This is all of the wood that I have left. So I need to order another couple of strips. So I don't have enough of the large one and the small one. I have an off cut, but for me to do this wall, you can see the discoloration from the picture that was up there. So I need to do this whole wall. I have some trim to finish here. So that like isn't too bad. So I need another, I'd say, two strips of either of this and then I have I think six or seven of these but what I've noticed is when you're doing the larger squares you really eat into all of your wood when you're doing the larger squares so here I think what I'm going to do is a square here a square here a square here a square here <laughs> and then small square big square above the radiator small square 
Um, obviously I have a light switch as well. So I need to plan out this wall. So I would like to have the same effect here on this wall. And then my couch is hiding over here, but I can do some more on this. So basically what I'm trying to say is I, I, I'm short wood to finish the other wall. I need to go and order some, but I also need a break. <laughs> if you are doing this, if there's two people and you're not trying to film yourself doing it, you would definitely do this in a weekend. So weekend project, absolutely. If there's two of you, you could probably, it took me two and a half days by myself to do this wall, making mistakes and also recording myself. So yes, I do think it's a weekend project, but it may take me many weekends to do the other side. <laughs> no, I will finish it because I can't sit in an unfinished sitting room. Oh, actually, let's push my sofa, the little one, in front of it so you can see what it looks like. buy one get one free I hear you so Sudal are running a promotion in the Republic of Ireland from the 24th of April until the end of May in selected stockists I leave a list of them in the description box now it's not every product but the fix all turbo is in the buy one get one free promo and the crystal so if you have some bathrooms that you need to put some silicon molding on or windows you can get buy one get one free Um, just for reference I used one and a half, not even a half. So I used one tube of fix -all for the whole wall. I used my nail gun for the larger pieces to help it, but for the top pieces, I only had to use my nail gun on the curved wall where it was flicking out. So I used one full tube of fix -all for the whole wall. And then I opened up a second one, but here. There's the end of it, I literally used a dribble. I will include the list of sockets and the items included in the buy one get one free promo in the description box so you can check that out. And the promo is Republic of Ireland and if you're watching this in the future, the promo is the 24th of April to the end of May 2023. Just for anyone who may be watching this video in the future. I'm now gonna measure this side of the wall, see what wood I need, order it. Oh God, there's still lots to do, but section by section, and I'll get there. <laughs> if you're new to my channel, check out my recent videos. If you like what you see, hit the subscribe button for my regular viewers. I need a big thumbs up for this one because this was hard work. And halfway through, I was like, what is happening? And then I seen a thing on Instagram, Mercury is in retrograde and there's an E. And you couldn't make this up. My memory card died at the last second, which is classic Mercury retrograde. Anyway, if you liked it, thumbs up. I'm proud of myself. I persevered. Will I persevere through the rest? Who knows? I'll see you in the next video.